There has never been a better time than now to come join the Belicio Foods team. Belicio has a new contract in place with plenty of awesome perks for their employees. From increased wages, access to the free health clinic, vacation after six months, and much more, Belicio Foods is committed to putting their employees first. For more information or to apply, visit BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Take advantage of these great new employee benefits and join the Belicio team today. Visit BelicioFoods.com slash careers to learn more. Day, everyone, and welcome to another edition of yeah. the morning show right here on Main Street TV. And I had to ask James what day it yeah, was. I was, gonna, so. I was gonna say we're gonna give you a little bit of an insight to the amount of planning <laughs> that goes into this show. Two seconds before we went on the air, Jen goes, "It's Wednesday, right?" <laughs> Happy Hump Day! Yeah, yeah. We need like a camel like to walk across the back here. A little graphic. Yeah, or little, just little a real cartoon. camel. Real camel. I don't. Th- Pretty sure we don't have the budget for a real cam- camel. Camel. Can we make a like a strongly worded letter or request? You can do or whatever you email want. Email or something to the. I'm afraid that. that Not uh, so much. Yeah, I'm afraid that that uh, you know invoice request is going to be rejected. I'd say you're probably <laughs> right. Oh well, but see, you start big, and then then yeah. our smaller ones don't look so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. How's Maybe. that? Maybe. That like we my- want a real life camel. Yep. And then, like, next week, we're like, we just want a new coffee pot. And they'll be like, sure. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Depends on how <laughs> fancy of a coffee pot we're talking, <laughs> I guess. <true. laughs> so, anyway, welcome, welcome to the morning show. And, of course, uh, Mr. James is here filling in. And we um, have an exciting video yeah, to show for you today. We do. And you actually got to go out and tour the Speyside facility yeah. here in our area. So last Friday, October 1st, was National Manufacturing Day. Okay. And so in honor. Oh, there. The, Hi, here Sam. he is. There, Come Mr. On Brady is here now. Um, I will go ahead and give up my seat and let uh, Sam explain this because he can explain it better than I can. Oh, well, okay. All well, right. come on over, come Sam. Come on over. Oh, well, you were told wrong, but that's okay, baby. You just come on over. Yes, ma'am. He does it. I like this yes, ma'am thing. Your wife must have you. We won't speak about that on the air. Okay, all right. (laughs) But yes. (laughs) Well, welcome. No, um, so James and I were starting off to talk about um, last, was it Friday? Yeah, Friday, October 1st, National Manufacturing Day. Correct, and uh, you all went out to the Speyside plant. We did. To take a tour, and, um, you know, <clears throat> it is, well, there it is. That's a very good picture. It's a um, great picture. Wonderful picture. Um, but, yeah, if you have not, number one, if you don't know what Speyside is, we're going to tell you. But number two, if you haven't had the opportunity to get out and, and take a tour, um, well, we're going to show you some stuff today, but man, oh man, is it a cool facility. It is facility. very cool. You have the blending of old world uh, artistry yes. uh, and craftsmanship with 21st century advanced manufacturing, and it, it is, it's, a, it's a sight to behold. I, I never get tired of seeing it. You know, and you're exactly right. And of course, um, Sam kind of came in uh, flying in at the last second. So Sam, uh, of course, is our... Jackson County Economic Development Partnership. Yes. What What is your official title? Uh, I am the president. President. And you have the task of, well, creating economic development and, and, and assisting in economic development here in our area. So the, the partnership uh, is tasked with, you know, helping foster an environment for our existing employers to uh, create new jobs, sustain the, the jobs they have Yes. Uh, by providing services, programs, access, networking, whatever we can do. Yes. You know, uh, I, I, have, I have offered to <laughs> do whatever a company needs to, to keep going. That's just, you know, how we do things here in Jackson County. We're, we, we're proud of, of the partnership, no, no pun intended, uh, oh. with our companies. Right. No, it's very well worded. <laughs> and additionally, we also try to uh, build on that by attracting a uh, new investment to the county to uh, broaden and diversify uh, the already great uh, 
portfolio of companies we have. That's exactly right. And of course, one of the companies that has moved into our area and took advantage of a wonderful facility that, that had been vacated, mm-hmm. uh, and that was the former Merillat uh, plant, where Spaceside then moved in, and it was just such a good fit because we're still woodworking. Yes. <clears throat> so, so how long has Spaceside been here? Spaceside announced in April of 2015. Okay. And they are operational May of the next 2016. Okay. All right, so they've been here longer than what you think. Time flies when you're co- having a global pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, yes, it does. <laughs> it definitely does. So, all right. So, tell us a bit about um, Spaceide and and um, what they do. And I think what you said, the very first thing that you said, is it's that blend of old world craftsmanship. And that was my biggest, I guess, shock is not the good word, like surprise mm-hmm. when I went out to tour the facility was how much of barrel making is human hands-on decision making. Yes. It, it is Artistry. Not, it, it, it's very little science to it uh, as far as like automation. I mean, there's everything is two-hand control out there. It is probably one of the safest plants I've ever to- toured. Yes. As far as the actual uh, milling and, and cutting. Uh, but it's all done by the, uh, the eye of the employees. Uh, they are very well trained. Uh, Darren Whitmer and Alberto Ramirez, the production manager out there, yep. uh, have uh, such a great uh, uh, knowledge of what they do. I mean, they're master coopers themselves. Yeah. And and they have instilled that uh, eye for excellence and attention to detail in this team out there. Uh, it's really just a, a cool place to see. And we're so 160 jobs yeah. right here in Jackson. Right. Like that's amazing. Uh, I believe we are we've officially offset all the full time losses from Marilat through this company. So there you go. It's amazing. It is amazing. And um, you know, if you haven't gotten to to meet Alberto and some of the folks that work out there, I mean, he has such an interesting story, and oh, yes. uh, he's fascinating to talk to. Just the places he's worked and and actually worked in winemaking and learned the, the yes. barrel uh, making through that. Um, but talk for a minute about, and, and may, I assume you know the answer to this question, a cooperage. Explain, because it's Speyside Cooperage, Bourbon Cooperage. Cooper. Yes. So a, a, a cooper is, you know, uh, an old world term for a barrel maker. Yes. So um, Speyside, which Speyside is actually named for uh, the original company in Scotland, so this Correct. is this is a full, this is actually an international company. It is. This was actually our first experience with foreign direct investment in Jackson, and it just took off. So you know, you know we had this foreign direct investment, like seventeen twenty one million dollars initial investment from uh, uh, this French company that owns Space Side from TFL. like overseas. And you're like, what exactly. is happening right now? <laughs> uh, and then to turn around and have the uh, the Thai investment at Blasio Foods. Uh, Correct. It's a, it's a great thing for uh, Jackson County. One of the things that is really uh, enticing to economic developers about FDI is because those investments are more long-term guarantees. Okay. Uh, they tend to have a, a longer outlook, a, a longer investment, a longer stake. So it, it's more of a it's more of a marriage out of the bat instead of a dating relationship. Love it. Love that. We get right to it, don't exactly. we? Exactly. We don't, we, we <laughs> we'll don't mess, mess around. around. <laughs> But no, um, and and I want to talk with you after we get to, you know, the video and all of that stuff. But I want to talk to you, if, if you don't mind, for a moment about, you know, if there's anything in the works or if we have any new projects coming up or whatever. You don't have to tell us all the details, but but you can tell us some things, um, maybe, if you if you have some fun stuff. Maybe give us a little hint, a little teaser, if you will. Well, as you will recall, everything we do is confidential until it's announced. It is. <laughs> but I, I, I'll say this. Uh, Jackson County in Southern Ohio, I mean, this this part of the state has a really, really strong uh, project pipeline right now. Yes. Uh, that's um, which, you know, we've had a lot of a lot of great base hits over the last year. Uh, Six Cents Brewing Company being one of those. Yeah, thanks. Um, Actually, the award-winning project, you guys did receive an award from Ohio Southeast Economic Development for that project. That's right. Um, but we, ha- we, have a, we have a very strong pipeline. Uh, people are wanting to invest. People are wanting to, to create jobs right now. Yes. We just need to get folks applying for those jobs. Yep. 
working. Exactly. You know, and, and folks around our area um, do have a strong worth work ethic and are talented. And uh, we just need to be able to showcase that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm, that's actually that's such a great segue to something I want to mention. And, you know, since now we are celebrating Manufacturing Month and, you know, to bring attention to National Manufacturing Day past sure. Friday, Jackson County in both terms of percentage of economy and raw numbers, is one of the top manufacturing communities in the state of Ohio. No way. Way. Good for us. We, we know how to make and produce things down here. Yay. So I, it's a stat that I'm very proud of. I mean, we, we have fantastic companies. You know, we're, we're the highlights on space side right here, but we have great manufacturers all across this community. Uh, ranging in smaller size, like six cents, you know, Wellston Aerosol, uh, uh, you know, smaller manufacturer to Belicio Foods, General Mills, H and H Industries, and Oak Hill. Yep. You know, people don't understand, like Tim's Wood Shop, for example. Exactly. This dude is making furniture, or not furniture, but but um, trim and doors and whatever that world, are going all over the world. World class artistry and manuf- again. Right, right here in Jackson, right here I'll in bet you all don't even know. And one of the neatest buildings you ever see. Yes, it is. So cool. Yes. So cool. So, yeah, I mean, even if it's not like Osco. a Belicio, yeah. yes, or Osco-sized, you know, plant, there are still many, many yes. manufacturing jobs around here and manufacturers. And we have, we have companies that are fabricating and producing that you wouldn't expect. You know, you know like uh, Montgomery Machine Shop, they, they do a lot of custom uh, fabrication pieces for companies. Absolutely. Uh, Redmar. Uh, Redmar. Um, the uh, Wiseman Brothers out in the Glade Valley area. Uh, just great small shops. These Romar and Oak Hill. Uh, just small family-owned companies that are creating Absolutely. great jobs. Well, look at, you know, for example, our friend Larry mm. that comes in to talk about the, the um, uh, what's that called, James? Why can't the, I think? The Antique Firearms. Yeah, like the, he makes the flintlock, the flint, um, oh, yeah. the like pre whatever guns. Those are high yeah. demand he makes right those, now. yeah. So like he makes those right here and sells those all over the world. And so you know it's just like crazy stuff like that that people don't even know. And we are doing that right here in our area. Right here in our area. So good for us. Absolutely, Gay Jackson. Yay! <laughs> All right, so um, so no, so lots of things in the pipeline, and I guess that's just what I wanted you to say is is it's not like we are stagnant here in our no. area, and you you guys are working constantly. We, we are working constantly, and you know, you, we mentioned my lovely bride a little bit ago. Uh, she, she will tell you the text messages and the phone calls go into the evening. That's you know that's what we do. We're it's a twenty four hour position. Yeah. Uh, the the work is done all the time, and uh, we don't talk a lot about what's going on because you know our, our prospects and our companies that we're working with they they need the uh, benefit of yes. uh, anonymity an- 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 <laughs> that word the word of the day james keep it that in front of the screen right there an- 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 i'm not sure i an- 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 spell it quite the way jen said it anonymity an- 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 what's the appalachian yeah. influx influx inflection they need the secret <laughs> uh, Sam, while we're talking about kind of things like what's coming up in the pipeline, do you want to kind of give us an overview of kind of what you went over last time we talked with you when we were talking about the uh, rail line at the former um, Goodyear plant? Yes. And Jackson, you want to kind of you know, maybe go over that a little bit again? Well, as part of the redevelopment project at the Jackson Ohio Industrial Rail site, we uh, we did actually, thanks to uh, that grant with the uh, the investment from Jobs Ohio. Yes. We actually rehabbed that spur going into that property. Yes. So in addition to a nice environmentally sound piece of property, you have a... Think of where Goodyear was or or Meridian. Was. Yeah, it was. Where future manufacturing will be. Yes. Uh, The uh, rail line has been uh, rehabbed, brought up to spec, and uh, the Ohio South Central Railroad is ready to start putting cars there right now. Actually, they have done some uh, car loading there. For a couple smaller companies. Super cool. It is super cool. We, we have a lot of really neat economic development assets in, in, in county-wide that we just, uh, we need to showcase more often. That's right. And not to mention, I mean, let's just talk for a minute about that. That section of our town is at the crossroads of like three major highways. 
So you have uh, plus the railroad. You basically have the crossroads of Southern Ohio right here with US 35, State Route 32, the James A Roads Appalachian Highway. That's right. And and 93, you and can count that. You count 93. It's a, it's a, a an adequate north south uh, corridor from uh, Ironton to Canton. Yep. Um, <clears throat> we uh, are shocked, I should say. The uh, we have great transportation access. You know. There's not a place east of the Mississippi we can't be at in you know 10, 12 hours from here. We got great shipping lanes, uh, as you know. The, these huge food manufacturers aren't here because we're isolated. You know, even though, right. <laughs> even though we we feel like we're we're in the nestled in the foothills of the Appalachians, as uh, you know, we like to we, we hear often. We can get anywhere in the country. That's right. We have easy quickly. access to highways and and byways and railroads and all of that and. We can hop right on it and go. And we're not far from ports either on the higher river. That's right. Yeah, I never thought about that too. You have yep. Arton. Yep. Yes. We also recently <laughs> toured uh, the James A. Rhodes Airport yes. for the show, and they Good talked point. about like how Another important another great economic yeah, project. Um, how important having that is in our region, and how you know nice that is compared to other rural airports. I believe I heard former Mayor Evans, Tom Evans used to refer to the airport as the most important mile, one mile of highway. That uh, came up in our in community. Th- yep, the most important mile um, in, in the county. Yeah. And um, that is because our runway is a mile long. It is a mile long. We, have, we actually have a, a fantastic uh, runway. Uh, the airport authority, uh, the, the commissioners have a really great team of uh, members and leaders on that board right now who are pushing projects at the airport. And uh, we are happy that, you know, it's been, what, nine Nine years ago when I got started, uh, our the, the partnership uh, worked with the airport authority and the commissioners to uh, actually construct the new terminal that's out there. That's right, and which it, you saw the video not too long ago. And as soon as you walk in to that terminal from the runway or from the tarmac, uh, yeah. the first thing you see are a couple of barrels from Space Side. That's right. So Very it's, cool. It's just popping up everywhere. They are. See, it all just goes round and round and round. Exactly. It's, the, it's that multiplier and, and, and you know, locally. That's right. So let's talk for a minute about Space Side and what and what you know. And um, so I was talking about. I don't think you were here. It was just the other day. I was talking about the fact that a lot of people don't understand, but these barrels that are made right here in Jackson, Ohio, are made from white oak, which yes. is very indigenous to our area, and yeah. that is what makes it. Not to mention the building, but makes it sort of enticing for for people to uh, bring in barrel making uh, places here. But um, so Space Side actually makes bourbon, or is it bourbon? No. What is it they make? They make barrels. But they but they have in Scotland they have <laughs> so in Scotland they but, make something. So, so after barrels have been so bourbon has to go into a new barrel. white oak barrel, right? And after it's, you know, the bourbon has had its aging uh-huh. cycle. Uh, I might have to lean on you for the technical terms here. It's more of what you do. <laughs> um, those barrels are often repurposed as Scotch whiskey barrels. Scotch barrel. Yep, that's what it is. So uh, yeah. used bourbon barrels will be, be shipped back to Scotland where they will be repurposed and then resold as. Uh, right. But when I was on a cruise, I actually saw, um, it was either bourbon or scotch that had the Space Side logo on it. Now, they're made, uh, and I was surprised. I was like, whoa. Well, now, the actual Spay River in Scotland, uh, where Space Side originates, uh-huh. uh, there, I'm sure there are probably many distillers in the area. And, yep. But the, but the company itself, they don't. They just make the barrels. They just make the barrels. But they do, and a lot of people don't know this, I mean, those suckers are put in big trucks and they're they're shipped, they're shipped yes. all over the world and they don't just you know of course we're dealing with 55 gallon or how many gallons these things are of yeah uh, oak uh containers they don't just go on a little uh dinky pallet they, no they, they don't fold up <laughs> no exactly they they go on some uh custom made uh, uh palletized uh units that are uh, impressive to see in their own right that's right and um it is just such a neat facility, and um, if you haven't gotten the chance, if you if you do have the chance, jump on it to take a tour yes. of the facility. Um, and you you're thinking to yourself, well, who cares? They just throw some wood together, and no, it's much much more than that. And they really love to do tours 
with new employees. So, you know, much like all of our manufacturing job, uh, manufacturers right now, they're hiring, you know, get there an application you go. in. Get your application in and uh, it's, it's a wonderful place to work. So, all right. So what do, what do we see in the video, James? You want to give a little well, intro? We, we basically just kind of go on the tour of the facility. We okay. kind of follow the process kind of from the beginning to the end. Okay. And get some insight on, you know, how how everything is done. And then at the end, there's a little bit of a discussion about the white oak in the area. Yes. And, uh, and then there's the presentation from uh, John Kerry with the uh, proclamation from Governor DeWine. Okay. Very good. So before James cues up that beautiful barrel footage, <laughs> um, <laughs> the first time I was ever in this plant yes. was not Speyside. It was actually toward the end of, of, of Marilat and Masco's presence there. Yes. And it was actually with a, a, a delegation uh, representatives from Jobs Ohio, now Ohio Southeast Economic Development. You know, we're coming together. How do we help these pl employees who are losing their jobs? Yes. And, you know, how do we help take advantage of this asset that is, you know, this really nice manufacturing facility? And it is probably the single worst uh, tour I have ever had to go through because uh, there was like this catwalk system that went over the, the, the main plant floor. And, it, and it's no secret who, who we were. And to see all these Maryland employees working themselves out of a job. Yeah. Look at, you know, I, I, you felt almost like a hospice nurse. Yeah. And I, I hated that feeling. Sure. So anytime we can draw positive attention to what's going on there now. Yes. Totally undoes all those bad memories for me. Yeah. And so, and there are a lot of Maryland employees who are there now. Which is great. Which is great. That's so good. So cool. Yeah. And, and that would be a very sinking and helpless feeling. Yes. Um, so we hope that this is a much, much better marriage for our community. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, James, we do have a video. And uh, if you haven't gotten to tour the Speyside plant in person, here is our best uh, alternative for you. So enjoy. Okay. Uh, what we do basically, we give them the specs, uh, they will send us the wood, then we pull samples, we grade the wood, like anybody would. You know, you get your product, you inspect it, then you send, you know, the information back to the supplier and you, you, they'll send us the invoice and we pay them. Sure. So basically, one, we want to remove all the tannic acid and bring the moisture down. We want the air, we want the snow, we want, you know, the, the wind blowing through it. Uh, when you cut a log in half, the moisture content in the log is between 50 and 60 percent. Within the first two weeks, you lose about 50 to 20 percent moisture content. So basically, the wood is cut, it's air dried. Before we move the wood into the pre dryers, obviously, we scan them and we select the oldest wood because we go first thing or first out. Then we move the wood into the pre drying process. What you see right here on the left is basically the silos that you were talking about. Yeah. So um, all the waste that we generate, it goes through a grinder. Then we use the biomass or, you know, the uh, byproduct to keep those borders going. And we generate 100% of the steam that we need with our own waste. Uh, we do sell some of the byproduct, which is all the shavings to AWF and they make wood pellets. So uh, we use 90% of it. Then we sell the 10% to them. Okay. The only waste that you see living out of this facility is the waste from the break room, you know. But everything that we have, you know, we recycle it. So this is one of our pre-dryers. We have three of them and we could store or we could pre-dry it about 15,000 sets. So that's what you see right here. It's about 15,000 sets and we're talking about 1.2, 1.3 million dollars worth of wood per pre-dryer. What we're doing right here, basically, uh, we're applying heat and air. I don't know if you could feel the humidity, but this room here uh, has to be hot enough so we could slowly remove the water from the wood. So you see those hidden elements on the walls? So basically there's steam flowing through there and the fence on top, we're basically continuously blowing air. We're softly removing the bond water and the free water. 
of this wood. The wood sits here between four and six weeks, and at the end, the moisture content on these specific stacks is below 20%. Once it hits below 20%, we move the wood into the kiln, and then in the kilns, our main objective is to increase the temperature and remove more moisture. Our main goal is to bring the wood down to 12 to 13% moisture content before we start making the barrels. Where the furniture, they, you know, they need to go up to 6%. So you don't have any movement whatsoever on the furniture. But since uh, we build the barrel, they add product, the barrel is always moving and the, the barrel is always expanding and contracting. During the hot days, during summer, there's whiskey going in the wood and the actual wood expands. And during winter, you know, it's cold, the wood contracts and there's no whiskey going in or product going in the wood as much as during summer. So you really want the cold days and the hot days of the warehouses in order for the product to extract those flavors from white oak. So once the wood is pretty dry, it moves into the kiln. And the kiln is basically the same as the pre-dryers. But the only difference is that on the pre-dryers, the temperature is around 85 degrees, where the kilns, we go up to 135 degrees. Obviously, we start slowly. We start from the current temperature, then the, uh, the system is run automatically by a computer. So it's continuously increasing the temperature until it gets to 135. So once the wood is dry, it goes basically into the dry storage and then manufacturing. <clears throat> so one, one barrel itself, we're talking about uh, 35 board feet. One barrel is 35 board feet. We have enough wood currently here in Jackson to make 189,000 barrels. So now we're gonna go and see, we're gonna go and see the CNC joiners and this is the first step of the process. So the first step of the process is basically to re-inspect the wood that we receive. The wood goes into the first step where it's double, double trim, got to the proper length. Once it's got to the proper length, we surface plane the outside of the stave. The stave will travel to those encoders or measuring devices. And what it's doing is capturing the width of the wood. It sends the signal or the measurement to the computer. The computer will do the math, you know, just a basic algorithm. And then it sends the information back to the cutter heads that you see right there with the big motor going in and out, in and out and up and down to create the profile or the shape of the stain. So if you really think about, you know, the math, Think about having uh, one barrel with only four staves. You will need 45 degrees to make the whole circle per joint. So that's the basic math that the computer does. It's based on you know the width. If it's two inches, it's gonna have you know so many degrees, and if it's five or six inches, it will have different degrees. So every single stave has its unique profile, its unique shape. So when we go into the assembly, it doesn't really matter whether we put. 50 staves or 10 or 20 because every single stave we have its unique profile. And the main goal is to get 360 degrees. It has its unique profile and everything is based on the width of the wood. Every single piece, it's different in width, but it has its unique profile or its, its unique shape. Uh, as you get to see, we saw this wood on ergo cards. So the more wood that we put on it or more weight, obviously the table will load. When we start taking some of this uh, wood from the car, the car itself is gonna elevate. So if you get to see the name, it's Ergo Car because we thought about ergonomics when we first started. We wanna, yeah, that way they don't have to go all the way down. So what Don is gonna be doing basically, he's gonna take one of those working hoops and they're all exactly the same. So he's gonna take the working hoop, he's gonna set it up on the bottom of the machine, and all he has to do is fill in the ring. The last piece has to be tight. So remember what I said, every step has a unique profile. So it doesn't really matter how many pieces you put in, as long as you fill the ring, the barrel's gonna be consistent. 
because of the computer, because of the PLC doing the math and doing all the work for us. So that is the working hoop. So his goal is to inspect the wood and at the same time raise the barrel. So the only key is the barrel. The only thing that keeps the barrel together is all the pressure. It's just pressure. Nothing. There's no glue whatsoever. But we need to have a perfect joint, a perfect cut. So their goal is to raise 300, uh, 250 barrels a day. He, he has raised about 400 barrels in one shift. That's what he has done. Is there, is there seven of them? Uh, there's three. So we have three. So that's 250, 250, and 250. That's 750. Then we have second shift. Yeah. So, so our goal is for day shift to get between 750 and 800. And second shift, 700, you know, and then set up for the next morning. So the actual shell travels through this tunnel at 75 feet. So we have some steam jets going steam that we generate ourselves and spray in water, cold water, because the steam is dry. And if you run the barrels through steam, you're gonna dehydrate the wood. So we have to spray water as well. So it's steam and water. So he activates the cycle. The actual barrel is delivered automatically. Once the barrel is delivered, the upper head is gonna come down. So he goes in and there's a safety screen. So when he goes in, the machine stops. He applies the head, he inserts the head on the barrel. He comes out, resets the cycle. The machine compresses the barrel and allowing him to put the head hoop on it. He needs to come out, reset the machine. The machine would drive the hoop down, clamp the barrel, and flip it over. You know, talking about ergonomics again, we don't want the employees to pull the barrel, and we didn't want them to flip it and push it back again. There's technology, you know. There's equipment, equipment to do it for us. So this is basically a hydraulic press, but it has a cone that bring all the steps together. Bring all the steps together. Then he applies the working hoop. The barrel's already formed, but you need to apply the heat because you want the wood to set in place. So the barrel's gonna travel to a preheat oven, reaching the internal temperature of 350 degrees on the inside and 200 degrees on the outside. So these barrels, I mean, they're, they're already hot. They're not as hot as they were when they came out of the tossing oven. But if you could feel it, they're warm enough. So what we're doing, we're setting the wood in place. That's what we're doing. Out here we have two operators, and basically they're inspecting for any, any wood defects or process defects. And if they see any process defect or wood defect, they're gonna remove the wood from the barrel, replace it with a new one. You see the parts right here. And then they're gonna date, they're gonna put a stamp, they're gonna date the barrel, and they're gonna mark it with a chart level. We have five different chart levels for our customers. Obviously, chart one through five, when it comes to charting the barrel. If the barrel doesn't have any defects, we're gonna run it through the machine and then we're gonna apply the working hoops. So that's what we're gonna go next. That's what acts the flavor. Yes, so 100% of the color comes from that and 50 to 60% of the flavor is coming from the chart. Yeah, this is char level number four. So basically, they're inspecting the wood and they have some laser lights with the measurements that we need. And once they get enough wood, they're gonna build the panel. Once they press the panel together, they're gonna place it in the conveying system and the panel is gonna go all the way around then we're gonna cut a circle out of the square. Just a clamp. We clamp the square, activate the cycle. A cut a head will come down and cut the circle.
So once we cut a circle, they're gonna load it, and this is basically like a big pizza oven. We're gonna see it from the front, we're gonna see the fires. Okay. The heads needs to be charred because both heads make 33% of the internal surface of the barrel. So they have to be charred as well. What we call the finishing department. As you get to see the barrel is already pre-finished, it went through the whole process, right? All the way from racing it, charring it, applying working hoops, removing the working hoops, adding the heads, and then the finished head hoops. As you get to see, every barrel has a date and a different code. That's one, this specific barrel is going to the largest distiller in the world. And uh, they have a specific code, D4. So the barrel goes out into these cooling lanes. We really want the wood to get close to our room temperature. Because if they go super hot, once you apply the hoops, the steel is gonna get hot, it's gonna expand. And if the barrel cools off, the hoops are gonna fall off. So we have to let them cool off for a little while. So, so this is the first step in finishing. When the barrel arrives, this is what we call the hoop drivers. The barrel arrives automatically to the operator. Then the operator is gonna take what we call the first quarter hoop and then the bilge hoop. So, the barrel is delivered to the operator. The machine is going to center the barrel. She's going to find the stay with the two rivets. And she's going to align the other two hoops with the rivets. And that's basically an indication where that's going to be the widest stay for the bone hole. So she drives those two hoops to the proper height or to the spec. The machine itself is going to pick the barrel, flip it, and spin it. Once again, we were talking about ergonomics. We, we thought about, okay, the operators. That way we don't have to pull the barrel out, flip it, push it back in place. And anybody can do this job. Obviously with the proper training. So once the bong hole is drilled, we're adding one gallon of water, seven pounds of air pressure, and we're basically pressurizing the barrel in order for us to do the quality check. Just like when we were kids and we have a flat tire on our bike, we have to look for the leak. It's the same principle. So this is our quality inspection, basically. The, the barrel rolls through the line. The water is basically distributed through the whole barrel and it has the air pressure in it. So our inspectors will bring the barrel to them. They look for any leak. If they see any leaks through the wood, basically they use the punch. If they have like a knot or a little a small uh, worm hole, they will basically you know, enlarge the hole. They apply these pins in it, blocking the leak. Or if it's a leak through the wood, they cut the wood with a the chisel, they apply this way. Basically what they do, they stop the leak before it gets to the surface. And if the barrel doesn't have any, any leaks whatsoever, they will do the quality stamp, release the air pressure, drain the water, and the barrel is ready to go. Or a theme park, and if you get to see a barrel with two S's, that means that the, that barrel was built right here. Okay. I guess one question we, I have, maybe it's more of a comment, that uh, this facility and other facilities you mentioned, even the ones in Virginia, are all in the Appalachian region. And uh, we work with in Ohio with the other states, the 13 states in Appalachian. Of course, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Virginia are part of that. And uh, one thing we're starting to focus on is agriculture, especially timber. Mm -hmm. And so I don't expect you to give me an answer right this moment, but if there's something we should be focusing on with it, uh, the Appalachian Regional Commission funding on timber relates to your business, you know, let us know and that's something we can add to the okay. conversation because I'm not a timber expert. We are working with OSU Extension, so they're, good, they're, they're a good partner, but timber is a very important industry to Ohio and the fact that you're um, using Ohio hardwoods and using the Appalachian region is really, you know, it's very important. So. Um, that's kind of the, something I would like you to think about. And if you have some uh, ideas of things we can do to help support your business, you know, please let us know through Sam or the mayor. Or awesome. So basically, the, uh, the OSU, Ohio State University, they're already working in educating the landowners. 
So some of the challenges that we're actually facing and we will be facing is basically the uh, white oak uh, sustainability, white oak you know, availability. So I really think that within your group, if you could educate the land owners where they need to know, they have to learn that it's healthy for them to go and harvest, go in and do some control fires, you know, so white oak, you know, will take over. So what's happening is you got other species taking over the white oak. And we're not going to see this, you know, in the next 20, 40, maybe 50 years in our time, but maybe our grandkids, they're going to see that other species will be taking over white oak. So there's some already, some groups already working, like white oak, um, uh, sustainability group, University of Kentucky, OSU. But I think, you know, we need to educate those land owners. Say, hey, go harvest your land. It's healthy. Uh, let them take the softwood, hardwoods, and everything else. But those are the things that we already have a group, you know, our uh, uh, wood procurement manager, our mill managers, our general managers, our group, and other cooperages within our industry. We're already working and partnering with groups like that. So, uh, You had a map earlier showing the oak in southern Ohio that brought you here. So how's it holding up? I mean, is it going to be good for... So uh, when we go out and start harvesting the, the 40 or the 50-year-old log, they're still there. But what's happened is we're not seeing the little ones growing as fast as, you know, as other species. Um, there's plenty, as I say, there's plenty. There's going to be plenty, and it's going to continue to grow. But when we talk about 40 or 50 years on the road, uh, other species will take over. Um, and why is that? How do you keep the white oak? <laughs> So basically what, what happened is if you, uh, white oak grows super slow and you have, I would say maple, I mean, they grow or ash or other species, they grow faster. So what's happening, if we don't open the canopy by going in and, you know, harvesting, you know, the mature trees, what's happening is white oak, it's, I mean, it, it grows super slow and other species take over and they take, you know, the sun away from them and they don't grow. So what we have seen is that for every 50, um, it takes about 50,000 acorns for one white oak to mature, you know, be a... 50,000 acorns? Mm -hmm. Wow. So if you really think about 50,000 acorns on the floor, right? And they're all growing at the same time. But then you get other wood species or other, you know, like grass or other, other tree, you know, gr taking over the sun fr from it. It's still going to grow. It's going to die. And only one will make it. Well, today's uh, small business, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you, okay. but uh, the governor very much appreciates your presence in Ohio and all the impact that you and the employees and the company has not only on Jackson County, but our whole region. And uh, he uh, would like me to present this to you on behalf of Ohio Manufacturing Day. Awesome. Congratulations. Well, thank you. What an amazing tour. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, and I would think you've been through the tour several times, and yes. I would say it never gets old. It, it, it never gets old. There's always a, a little tidbit that you didn't pick up before or something you, you observe new. Uh, and they're very much like what they do for a living. They're what they produce. They're very detailed in, in their explanation because... It's a, it's a detailed process. It is a detailed process. And, you know, you were telling me off the air a few things that, that can be done here and there to maybe, like, help seal a barrel or whatever. And I, in our tour, I hadn't heard that part of it. And I'm like, oh, I need to take another tour so I can hear more. <laughs> Absolutely. Or, you know, you can become a cooper. Become a lady I cooper. Could. A lady cooper. I like it. Right. I'm going to call Alberto and say you said that. Use me for a reference. <laughs> He'd be like, no, no, I know you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but no, Sam, uh, thank you for um, coming in and whatever. And um, so you said off the air, too, that we are looking forward to several economic uh, economic development announcements. That's hard for me to say. But we can't really do anything right sure. now. We're still in the works. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a pretty strong pipeline. And there are, you know, varying levels of development for those projects, some very, very early stage, some we are in the thick of, and there are a couple that are trending in our trajectory for announcement that uh, we're pretty proud of. How hard is it for you to keep all these secrets? I just don't go anywhere. 
<laughs> until you come here and we keep twisting your exactly. arm. Exactly. So tell us. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, hey, that shirt looks familiar. Have I seen that before? Uh, apparently, this is what the shirt I wore this past Friday when we went to uh, Space Side. But I promise. Like, oh, my God. I think I have the same shirt on. Apparently, the, the laundry rotation at the Brady household <laughs> failed just the right time. Sorry, sweetheart. You must really like that shirt. I love the shirt, actually. Hey, I'll give you credit. You wore a different jacket. That That's good. Yeah, that's, so, you're okay. It's not the same outfit. No. It's the same base layer. Same base layer that, you know, I, I can never wear again in public in Jackson County. <laughs> so, if anybody sees Sam out today, say, I've seen that shirt before. That was, you look so familiar. I'm not, I'm not, I promise you I'm not a hobo. I'm just... <laughs> He just picked the first one out of the laundry. Yeah, I, I know I should have worn the, the red one. That's just... <laughs> no, that's really cool. So at the end, um, Alberto was talking a little bit about the trees. And, you know, one of the areas or one of the things that makes um, Speyside, you know, love our area is the fact that we do have a lot of white oak sure. trees here in our general vicinity and um it would be interesting as he was talking about you know harvesting and whatever a lot of the trees need to be harvested they need to be harvested and i because i that's the one i guess maybe little negative i've ever heard about about that place well i don't know i don't they, i like them cutting our trees down well it's like fish in a pond they need to be um Some, they, you need to work on the population a little bit Speyside benefits nothing, or, or any of our, our wood companies for that matter, from a 100% harvest of what we have no. with no replenishment and no regrowth. We, we, we need to harvest and restore. Right. Uh, it's, it's a responsible thing to do. Um, if you ever, you know, my, my boys love to be in the woods behind our house. In fact, uh, my youngest, Simon, was asking, you know, is the poison ivy dead so you go in the woods now, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Understood. I have a husband like that. But when we go in the woods, you'll notice that there are just these skinny trees that go straight up with no spread or, or canopy to them. Right. And that's because they're fighting for sunlight. Right. You know, they're they're you know, a plant grows towards the light, and that's one. Of the, you know, that's why we need to actually have you know, responsible harvesting, responsible uh, uh, control burns, as as, as Alberto said. Please don't go. Don't burning, burn down your don't burn down your the backyard. Woods. Yeah. Um, but uh, these, it's, it's all part of uh, good ecology. It's all part of good economics. Sure. And, you know, there are, we were talking too off the air, it would be interesting to get some of our local tree um, folks. I don't even know what the, the word would be. People that work in that industry. Uh, of course, Venton County it's has a arborist. huge arborist. Uh, Venton County has a huge yes. uh, lumber industry. And how they, you know, you don't just tear it all down and then leave the area no. you you know it has to has to sustain so um how how do they make that happen and that would be a fun uh, show to be. talk about um i believe ohio state uh, university south centers in piketon actually uh has put on in the past and even recently uh, lumber grading courses oh um so that could be a you know interesting uh, topic for someone to actually come and tell you what you know, grade a piece of wood is based on, you know, their inspection of it. Right. I love that. All kinds of cool videos for James to make. I know. We just keep... Oh, we even came up with a reality show while we were off the air, too, didn't we? We did. I think it's fantastic. Uh, you, you don't give it away, though, because somebody else will beat you to it. That's right. Oh, no. It's it's right here and right there. It's in the trap. Yeah. <laughs> we let James in our little secret, only because he would have to be involved. <laughs> you, you need a strong producer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> His his video prowess is needed. <laughs> exactly. He, he's fearless when it comes to videoing. I love it. I think it would be a huge success, though. We'll all retire early. We will. We'll be out on the open road. That's our only hint. You, you, you've said too much. Yep. It's our only hint. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. So, no, this is exciting. Several uh, projects in the pipeline here in our area. Um, some some announcements hopefully coming up really, really soon. And, um, you know, we're, we're booming. We 
want to make sure that people do go and apply for these awesome jobs, though. Absolutely. Uh, I have not spoken to an employer uh, in our community or even in the region that is not looking for, for, for help right now. That's right. And they're, they are being very aggressive in their recruiting. Uh, quite frankly, there is no reason whatsoever if you're an able-bodied individual not to have a good job right now in this community. Correct. And um, it's certainly out there for you if you're willing to take the, the opportunity and, um, yeah, just do your, do your, uh, res check your resources and check around and do some applications. Absolutely. And you'll be in good shape. All right. Well, Sam, is there anything else you wanted to talk about while we have you here in the heat? Our air, um, our air kind of went south, so... We're all a little um, Actually, there is uh, uh, there was an announcement from the Depart Ohio Department of Development. Okay. Uh, a couple of different projects were funded in our community. Uh, the city of Jackson received a, a grant for some sewer improvements. Oh, great. Uh, here in town, as well as the neighborhood revitalization grant that the Jackson County Commissioners was applying for, uh, for the benefit of the village of Oak Hill. Uh, that, those funds are moving forward, so. Oh, wonderful. Uh, uh, our local uh, government partners have, you know, worked hard to secure those funds, and you know, the state of Ohio is, is reinvesting in Jackson County as they should be. You know, and I think I'm just going to give you credit for a minute, and Taylor, and 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 Bren, and you know, all of the folks that that work within uh, economic development, because you know, there's been a long, 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 long time that Jackson County and and our area was forgotten. And you all have put us back on the map, and we can't thank you enough for that. Well, Y'all are working hard. There, there is a great team of people in place, and has been for a long time. But, uh, you know, there's a, a saying that uh, a society is great when old men plant trees that they'll never enjoy the shade of. Okay. And there are a lot of people who sowed seeds before us that are, are coming to bear now. And we are we're we have a team in place that's aggressively pursuing um, and keeping attention on Jackson County, which is and it's we, and yeah we got it coming and going. I think it's I just cannot thank you all enough. You all are are amazing, and um, if you see them out on the street, thank them. You might not even know what you're thanking them for because I can't tell you what the heck they're doing, <laughs> but thank them anyway because there's a lot going on. Well, thank you. And please don't say nice shirt. God, that shirt looks so familiar. We should, we should retire it. I'll, 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 bring, I'll frame it, hang it in Archinetti's. Okay. And and everyone will be like, what's that shirt? And I'll be like, oh, you know. There's a, there's a story. Don't you know? You need to go find Sam Brady you and ask him. You click on the link and, and watch the video now. <laughs> All right. Well, Sam, we will let you get out of here for the day. We appreciate you um, stopping oh, in and, and hanging with us. And anytime you have any fun stuff to tell, we would love for you to come tell it here. Well, I have to sneak past Pete Wilson and Jeremiah Shaver first. We won't tell on you. We could do it simultaneously. Like a, big, like a, like a press conference. Yes. But just do it here. <laughs> Actually, with a green screen, you can make it look you know, like the brief room of the White House. We could, like, and, and like, we could put those, like, like the camera flashing, like, sounds in the background. Absolutely. It'd be fantastic. I love it. That's it's our like, second great idea since we, you've been we, here. We have, a, like, a whole production company thing going right now. James, get to it. <laughs> James is like, I'm only one man. We didn't have the budget for a coffee maker earlier. <laughs> That's Jen. true. Now we're, try we're trying to do all these big productions. Well, I went from we're asking across the for... street in the spot. That's true. I went <laughs> from asking from a live camel to be on our set to I would just you know because you got to you got to ask for for the big sale, and then I was like, if we ask them for like a new coffee maker, they won't it won't be so bad. Live camel. I wanted a live camel. It's hump day. I want a live camel. We to set up walk for a pack of camels. Bye. Maybe. Jason Jason okay. Brown can make it happen. He could. He could. That's he could. right. That's not far away either. It isn't. Hopefully, we get to do that this year. I yep. agree. Our Christmas cheer from yesteryear. Absolutely. That's always a good time too. That's a wonderful event and. Uh, 
Man, let's keep our fingers crossed that we can, can I, do that I did that see again. where Wellston Main Street's already, you know, making preparations for uh, Christmas treats on Wellston Streets. At the, Good. So do that this year. Let's let's celebrate Christmas. I love it. Let's do it. Absolutely. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yo, don't be skipping Halloween on us. True that. We don't want to miss out on that turkey dinner either. Yeah, I do get mad when people skip over Thanksgiving. Because it is uniquely American, and what what more of an American thing than to get together, eat too much food, and just thank God for the wonderful bounty that we experience. Correct. And pumpkin pie. And pumpkin pie. So don't skip over Thanksgiving. But, uh, yeah. Ooh. And if you haven't watched Squid Games, it's uh, quite interesting. You haven't, and um, James hasn't. Well, I, I heard people talking about it online, and I didn't know what it was, but then I saw the preview on Netflix last night. So, so they are hyping it up. Of it now. They're hyping it up to be the the biggest, the biggest series that has ever been aired on Netflix, bigger than than The Crown and Bridgerton and all of those. Anything. We'll see. Take your word for it, it is a bit bizarre. We've watched the first two episodes. <clears throat> um, probably don't want to watch it with the kids unless they're a little older because it is a bit dark, to say the least. So, anyway, that's another story. But, all right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Um, James, you want to head over to the weather real quick before we get out of yeah, here for the sure. day? Uh, because, and the reason I wanted to mention that is some rain has definitely popped back into the forecast. Um, about a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms today with highs around 78, uh, thunderstorms and showers overnight tonight, lows around 64 and kind of the, the same thing the next two days tomorrow, though, a 70% chance of showers and thunderstorms. And then Friday, that 50-50 chance of showers and thunderstorms. And then as we get on to Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you know, those temperatures are still just holding steady at 77 to, to 80. I mean, man, that's so good. I'm still dressing for fall anyway. He is. And that same shirt. It's the same daggone shirt. The same shirt. Do you have more than one fall shirt? Yes. Okay. Well, would you please wear it the next time you come up here? I, I, James, please remind me. Do not wear. Next time we, yeah, next time we send you an invitation. Next, next time like, I put a tie on, dress appropriately. Sam. <laughs> no, I think what you should do the next time is just not wear the jacket. So it was like three separate outfits. Well, actually, uh, the last time I was here, uh, I remember I wore a sweater, and uh, my administrative assistant Amanda, whenever I wear a sweater, um, you may notice my my beard is whitened. Uh, a, a good bit over the last few years. And for all you Gilmore Girl fans out there, whenever I wear a sweater, she calls me Taylor Dosey. <laughs> Especially when we, you know, do something with a piece of property or something that, you know, yes. I'm Taylor buying up the town. Gotcha. And so there, apparently there's this controversy galore around whatever I wear here, whether it be a pizza slice from many, many years ago. That's true. Or sweater vest or... Yeah, a shirt that has questionable cleanliness to it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I never questioned the cleanliness. I just questioned the repeat. But, but within, within five days, you have to question, though. Even the, Good job, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel's son. <laughs> Need chopsticks. Be impressive. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get out of here. I, You've I, got work to do. I do. You have economic development things. I have lots of them. Yes. All right. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, tomorrow do we have a guest, James? Yeah, so Pete Wilson's going to be in tomorrow to do some news. And then Yay. Ben Davis Jr. will be in. That's right. And he's going to talk about the uh, most talented beard in America contest. Speaking of beards. He's entered in to win uh, $20,000. That's right. And I think he's going to play us a song. I love it. We love our, our friend Ben. So. Yeah. All right, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Hump Day, and have a wonderful afternoon. Bye, everyone.